Hello and welcome to the Stars of Comedy. I'm Akshay Jethiadi. Please welcome Cyrus Sahukar. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Sir. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thank you very much. Tell us something about your childhood. Yeah, I was born in uh, Mau, which is military headquarters of war. So yeah, it sounds like a pretty impressive setup. Every artist in their career has that one indelible moment where they know that you know they're here to stay. Hmm. What was yours? I think here to stay happened for me the day I got, uh, there was a show called Puli Pal. So uh, I mean, talking about Simi Girebal, how did the whole idea come about, and did you ever get into trouble with Simi Girebal? Okay, so the idea came about again out of pure necessity. Hmm. It was two thirty in the morning, okay. and I was sitting at that point uh, with uh, Cyrus Brocha. Hmm. We ran out of jokes, and we had to submit an episode. Okay. This is how stuff used to happen. You know these great. Uh, shows they show you where there's a yeah. time lapse and yeah, people yeah, yeah, yeah. are like ooh, ooh and there's a director who's like we've been writing this for seven months <laughs> you've been writing it for seven minutes you've decided to not write it and I don't blame you either because you got mm-hmm. ten other things to do mm-hmm. but that's what happened we decided to do Vikram or Baital okay how original very and we found an old wig okay so I put the wig on mm-hmm. and decided to cast myself as Baital because I didn't want to carry <laughs> Cyrus Brocha I, that would that comes free, <laughs> free with a hernia, right? <laughs> Plus the rashes from God knows where he's been. So I hung on to him. All right. But I'm six foot three inches tall, which means my legs were just like sort of these things hanging off him. So on frame it looked really creepy, like it was like a dead body or some. Shit. And he said, "I'm my my body parts are hurting. I can't breathe." So we decided to just. Just do a talk show. Sport, yeah. We we didn't have another talk show to do, but Simi Girebal. So we started spoofing her, and had such a blast. Now mm-hmm. that one episode, somehow when the ratings came in, yeah. was the highest rated episode of of that uh, season. Wow! So the bosses were like, "Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe there is something here." Yeah. And we decided. Let's wake up to it. Let's wake up to it. <laughs> yes. We've been abandoning these fools for years, you know. Okay. Uh, and they decided to do a full fledged series with it, mm-hmm. and that uh, really got. Out there, I had a lot of fun. So that's how sort of it happened. Okay. And we'd shoot nights only. Uh, and the day I used to do another show called Business Bazigar, which was a copy of The Apprentice. Uh, so yeah, it was. That's how it all happened. And did you ever get into trouble? With Big the trouble, like serious huge. trouble. Uh, uh, actors who decided to not be part of our show okay. because they were told that this is insulting. Um, I and. Uh, yeah, it was trouble. I was told by everyone that, dude, you're never going to work again because you've wow. sort of messed around with the biggest guns. And those days it was slightly different. In 2004, it was still like, now everyone's like, hey, if I spoof you, I'm Comedy. cool. Then it was like, yeah, you know, yeah. you will die. Yeah. But I was like, okay, I don't have a career. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. When you have very little to lose, you're like, okay. What, you know. what are you going to do? Yeah. Like, literally, yeah, yeah, it's this or, you know, the pole dancing career, which is fine. <laughs> So this, okay. and uh, yeah, I went for it. Okay. I think the only time I really interacted also with the, and we weren't really, we were really respectful, man. We didn't make any like tacky jokes or anything. We were just spoofing the show. Sure. And the banal, mm. sort of over celebration of m- misery yeah. by people who really have pretty good lives, mm. and the people, I must say, themselves were really liking it. Yeah. Uh, but this was a bit of an issue, uh, and yeah, and then I had Baman Irani's son's wedding, and I didn't. It's really good Parsi food. Parsi weddings, if you don't have any Parsi friends, just be nice during wedding season to them because you want to get invited. Sure. You know, you do. You have to. Hmm. You're Kashmiri, you're Parsi. You have to get invited to these five weddings in your lifetime. So I I was at Baman's son's wedding and I stopped eating for two days thinking I'll eat a lot. (laughs) And I'm at this big table and I'm, and they give you meals in, so they're moving meals. Okay, all right. Okay. And as I am eating, I take my first two bites and I look up and I am sitting right across uh, Simi Garewal. Out. And so my whole digestive system sort of shut down. And though she was really gracious and uh, you know, Mm -hmm. there was no real conversation about anything else. Um, But it led me to, on my my left was Mr. Nasiruddin Shah, who I believe was out to have a really nice calm evening. Mm -hmm. But out of nervousness, I, 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 I mean, short of just like randomly like cuddling him, I was practically on top of him saying, sir, you know, I love you and, you know, 
it was just like he was like listen man you know like there's a line you're just creepy and he started moving like he, he was so unhappy i don't think he'll remember this but for me i was almost on to him yeah and asking him stupid questions out of nervousness like what are your views on the gobi you know not enough has been said about potatoes so what do you think of potatoes he's like doing just like he was really like tired of me but that's I the only experience i've ever had <laughs> okay yeah otherwise i've been undercover okay <laughs> what about the bench the bench is recent um mm -hmm. we uh, bench is basically uh, for a long time uh if you and you know this you've mm -hmm. hosted so many shows yourself mm -hmm. there is a relationship between the star yeah the star the star and the host <laughs> yeah. which is a very awkward relationship yeah right it's mm -hmm. this bizarre so you're not talking to each other mm -hmm. for like 6 minutes and you're making really dumb presentries like oh it's getting really hot <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah it's, uh, bombay was bombay example you did yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you start, yeah. And then suddenly, you're really like yeah. intense the minute yeah. you start doing the show. Sure. So sure. I want to write a show about that bizarre relationship hmm. where the poor star is also unhappy because the star has to hmm. talk about some promotion. Hmm. The host is like desperate to try to get the best content out. Yeah. And it was uh, the idea came. We wanted to shoot it like a documentary hmm. about a show that failed. Hmm. So we shot with eight or nine stars. We aired two episodes on YouTube, and now it's going to be aired on a television network. So it's fun. It's a show hmm. about failure. Okay. And the relationship between uh, the star and the host. Never ever seen before on Indian television, is it? Never seen before. Never. No, it's a mockumentary. It's on the making of a flop show. This is nice. I am excited about it. I I think it's very offbeat hmm. and I think it'll be fun, yeah. I really uh, had fun writing it. Okay. And we're writing one more uh, series for it. Hmm. So, yeah. At least the process of trying to write and create your own thing is great, yeah. Do you think that uh, we still need to grow, probably as audience, to be able to appreciate something and not literally take it too hard all the time? No, I, I, I don't know, man. I was reading this article by Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld, yeah. and he said this whole uh, give the audience what they want is the biggest mistake people have been making. You should never give the audience what they want. You should give them what they don't want, so they start getting fun into something like that. And 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 show them stuff. But India, if you sit in people's houses, yeah. they're damn funny people. Yeah, everyone's making fun of the other person. Uh, people are laughing a lot. Somehow, on a on a on a commercial space, yeah. uh, it's one type of comedy or one type of thing. And then I I don't know, man. Itne saare log hain. It's not like all of India is like yeah. bigoted or Agreed. racist. Yeah. But we are we are crazy. Yeah, mm. we are. Mm. So it's so difficult to de describe your country. We are we are racist. Mm. uh we are bigoted we have an ego problem but we also yeah. self insulting self deprecating there's so many indias in india mm -hmm. that it's really really tough for me to ever have this one label for anything okay uh it's you'll go to one group of people mm -hmm. they'll be super okay with taking the piss out of them yeah. you go to another group and they'll kill you yeah it's which group you end up in that's exactly the question that you know uh then do you have to tread very carefully because you know you wouldn't want to offend some certain sensibilities but at the same time you know you'd like to get your thought pr uh, process across to you know to say that hey listen you know it's just in jest ha but wo bolna hi insulting hai ha it's like almost thing that joke ha it's <laughs> for the hell man <laughs> yeah. like you know no doctors now doing operation <laughs> okay. so yeah i feel that i think you just do what you have to do hmm. and whoever's not going to like it is not going to like it in any case yeah this whole yeah. please pleasing is really difficult it's hmm. not work, uh, working out but yeah depend again i'm telling you it's podium if i'm hosting a corporate show for a bank yeah. then i'm hired by them so i will have their restrictions yeah. uh, you ask any stand up comedian about live shows they always say the same thing they say like don't be offensive Uh, don't talk about religion don't talk about politics no films ah huh? mm -hmm. just very so he said i got no jokes left <laughs> i got nothing left man in fact i was talking to a comedian the other day and he is like you know these were a set of rules that were given to me before yeah. the show and i did them you yeah. know according to the rules that were uh, kind of offered and he's like right after the show's over a group of the bosses not even you know your regular middle level the senior bosses took me aside on a balcony and they're like ab gande jokes suna लोग और खुल भी रहे हैं एंड थिंग्स आर है 
I think more than ever now, I've not seen these many comedians employed in something or the other ever before in India. Sure. Ever. I think people should just do whatever they feel like doing. And I love that someone's checking their phone while I'm doing a show. Because then I can go to that person. Maybe read the message, you know. <laughs> we are like that, yeah. It's human behavior, yeah. And um, uh, I see a lot of uh, people get really offended. I have no such problems, man. Yeah, you can sort of take a call while I'm chatting.